Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making conchas. Conchas are a Mexican sweet bread that uses yeast to rice and they are topped with a sugar cookie type paste. I do have to say that today's recipe is rather labor intensive, but they are totally worth it. And today we are making them in three flavors, which are vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. So if you want to find out what this bread is like and what the recipe is, keep watching and let's get started. These are the ingredients that we are going to need for this recipe. all-purpose flour, sugar and cinnamon, salt, vanilla, milk, quick rice yeast, butter and eggs. Before starting, I'm going to set the oven to proof if your oven doesn't have this option, turn your oven on to bake at the lowest temperature, which is usually anything below 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And now after we've done that, we can begin. The first thing I am going to do is heat the milk for one minute. We want the milk to be warm, but not boiling. Now I'm going to add in one tablespoon of sugar from our total amount of sugar. And I'm also adding in the quick rice yeast. Now I'm going to mix this all together with a fork to help the yeast dissolve and we're going to set this aside to allow the yeast to react or activate and it's going to become bubbly and puffy. The whole process of activating the yeast is going to take anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes and you'll notice the difference after this time is up and I'll show you that later in the video. You can make these conchas without using a stand mixer, but today I'm going to use mine because I am making more than one batch. This dough can certainly be made by hand, but also make sure to note that it will involve a lot of kneading, which is going to total approximately 20 to 30 minutes of kneading by hand. Also, it's very important to have a sieve because we are going to use the sieve to add in all of our ingredients starting with the all-purpose flour so that we can prevent any lumps in the finished dough. And I'm also going to add in my cinnamon and my sugar using the sieve again to take out any big lumps. And finally, I'm also going to be adding in the salt. And now I'm going to mix these ingredients using the dough hook on my stand mixer. And I just want to make sure that all of these ingredients are spread out evenly before we add any of the wet ingredients. After a few minutes, I'm going to add in the butter. Make sure that your butter is at room temperature and also make sure to cut it into small squares to make sure that the butter distributes evenly throughout your batter. Now 
At this point, the milk and yeast and sugar mixture should be ready to add in. Make sure that your milk and yeast look exactly like this, which is puffy and bubbly. Otherwise, your conchas will not rise during the proofing and during the baking and final product. And along with the milk and yeast, I'm also adding in my vanilla flavoring. Now I'm going to mix all of these ingredients using a dough hook and after a few minutes I'm going to add in the eggs slowly while the mixer is still on and remember that all of your ingredients must be at room temperature so that they are able to mix well together a lot easier. If you're doing this by hand, make sure to add in the eggs one at a time and continue to mix the dough until all of these ingredients combine. Continue to mix the dough for 10 minutes and at the 10 minutes mark, turn off the stand mixer and scrape the sides of the bowl. You're going to notice that your dough will be runny and it's going to look gooey and it's going to look like you did everything wrong, but don't worry. At this point, we are going to add in the remainder of amount of flour that we set aside. And I do like to add in the last bit of flour a little at a time so I can see how the dough changes without adding too much flour and preventing from drying out the dough. Make sure to turn off the mixer from time to time so you can scrape the sides of the bowl and at the same time add more flour until you are finished with the amount that we set aside. After an additional 10 minutes, your dough should be ready and the dough will still be a little bit loose and it will stick a tiny bit to your hands, but that is completely fine. At this point, we are ready to move on to our next step. At this point, if you turned on your oven, Go ahead and turn it off and if you press the proof button then you don't have to do anything. What we want to do is we just want our oven to be hot to help the dough rise. And now that the dough is ready I'm going to transfer this dough to another bowl for proofing. And basically what I did before adding in the dough I sprayed my bowl with nonstick spray to make sure that the dough doesn't stick. Then slowly I'm bringing in the dough from the outside to the inside just like this and now I'm going to also cover my bowl with plastic wrap and I'm going to move on to the next step. I'm going to place the dough into the oven. Remember the oven is off and if you're proofing it, it's on proof but it's warm so we are going to let our dough rise for two hours. I'm preparing my surface by sprinkling all-purpose flour all over my surface. This is how the dough should look after two hours. It should have doubled in size and it should have tiny air pockets within the dough. Thank you. 
I'm going to transfer my dough onto the floured surface and I'm going to slowly and carefully knead the flour into the dough but only slightly, just enough to help me form a log with my dough to make cutting the conchas a little bit easier. If you feel like you need a bit more dough, sprinkle the dough on your log and continue to roll this log. Turn the seams side down and with a bench scraper or a dough scraper, begin to trace where you want to cut. Remember that this recipe makes 24 medium sized conchas, so I'm going to trace out 24 pieces. It is a little bit easier to cut smaller portions if you make four even pieces and then cut those into smaller portions so that all your dough balls will be a little bit more even versus just trying to guess what size to cut them. So what I did here is I re-rolled this piece of dough because I wanted to get one more ball out from it. So if you do mess up, it is completely fine to re-roll your dough. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep cutting out all the portions and then set them to the side. Now I'm going to take one portion and bring all the dough from the outside to the inside towards the middle forming a small belly button and then I'm going to roll it until I form a smooth ball. So basically I'm just going to continue rolling all the portions until I finish rolling all of them. Now that I have all the dough balls rolled, I'm going to place them on my baking sheet for a second proof. So I simply lined my baking sheet using parchment paper, but you can also use a nonstick baking sheet sprayed with nonstick spray to do this. I'm going to place 12 balls per sheet. Remember that these will double in size, so make sure to separate them enough so that they don't bake right into each other. Once all the balls are on the baking sheet, I'm going to take some butter in my hands and rub the tops of the dough with this butter. And what this is doing is it's going to help to stick the topping when we are ready to place it on top. For the next step, I'm going to use small pieces of parchment paper and a wooden cutting board to smash these small balls into larger circles. So what I'm doing is I'm placing a parchment paper on the surface that I'm working on, then I'm placing the small ball in the middle of the parchment paper 
Then placing the top piece of parchment paper and with the wooden cutting board, I'm going to smash the center of the ball and basically concentrate the weight in the center to ensure a more even circle. And I'm going to continue until I am all done smashing all the small bowls into bigger circles. I did find it easier to start placing your circles as you smash them so that they don't get stuck onto the surface that you lay them on. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to place each circle of paste on top of each concha and it's better to have the paste overhang rather than be smaller because the conchas will puff up and it's better to have more sugar paste than not enough covering the surface. I'm also using a pastry cutter to cut the design on top of the conchas. Don't press too hard because this will cause the paste to cut and then crack. If you do have one, you can also stamp your concha with a concha stamp, but a pastry cutter like this one works just fine. And then when I'm done stamping the conchas, I'm putting them all back into the oven the oven is off but it is still warm and I'm going to put the concha trays into the oven to proof for an additional 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes, take out the conchas from the oven and turn on your oven to preheat at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. When your oven is warm, place the tray of conchas into the oven and bake for 18 to 20 minutes or until the bottoms are golden brown. This topping is made with three key ingredients which include all-purpose flour, powdered sugar, and butter. To start, take a sieve and pass the flour and powdered sugar through the sieve to prevent lumps in the final mixture. You can also do this in a bowl, but I prefer to do this on a clean surface because you're going to need to use your hands to get the correct texture. For flavor, I'm going to add in some vanilla and I'm also adding in the room temperature butter and with my hands, I'm going to mix these ingredients until we form a paste. If you only want to make vanilla conchas, this is the point where you stop because this topping will have the taste of vanilla. I'm going to form a roll and cut this paste in two pieces. Then I'm going to take one portion and cut it into two more pieces so I can show you how to make strawberry and chocolate concha topping.
For the strawberry topping, I'm using the Sugar Art Red Rose Powdered Color and Amoretti Strawberry Flavoring. In case you don't have access to these items, you can also use Strawberry Nesquik Powder and Pink Gel Food Coloring that you can find at your local grocery store. I'll be sure to leave the measurements for the Nesquik in the description in case you want to use Nesquik instead of the items that I'm using here to be sure to check the description or on my website. After adding in the coloring and the flavor, I'm going to knead this paste again. And since I added gel flavoring, the paste will be a little bit more sticky, but it will come together in the end. For the chocolate topping, I'm using Nestle Cocoa Powder and to prevent any lumps, I'm going to pass the cocoa powder through a sieve to prevent these lumps from going into the paste. And once again, I'm going to repeat the same step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knead the cocoa powder into the paste until the paste turns into a chocolatey brown. And now that I have all three flavors, I'm going to roll all of them into logs so that I can cut them evenly. Remember to cut your logs in the amount of dough balls that you rolled. And basically what I'm going to do is once I cut all these little portions, I'm going to roll them into small balls so that it's easier to smash them into circles on the next step. Here is how the conchas look when they come out of the oven. They are fluffy and they go perfect with a glass of milk or café de olla. The inside of this sweet bread is fluffy and the outside is perfectly coated with sugar paste. I hope you try and love this recipe. Don't forget to leave me a comment telling me what your favorite sweet bread is. 
share this recipe with your friends, subscribe before you go, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!